So the theme for the 2013 uh, Clinton Global Initiative is Mobilizing for Impact, and we've got the organization that has is as much impact as anybody that you'll know. The Global Give Back Circle, Linda Lockhart, the founder, and Mary Muende, a beneficiary, and now is going on to doing great things. So Linda, Mary, welcome. Thank you. And we're actually a year, uh, it was a year ago that we, I think Mary, we first met, and Linda, we met again. Yes. And so there's been a lot of progress in the last year, I understand, Linda. There has. There has Tell us been. about that. Well, we um, are truly global. We launched in China. China? We launched in China in March, mm -hmm. so that's big news. And we're 80% away from launching in India. Oh, no kidding. Mm -hmm. And so you're, you're still working in Kenya? Definitely. So for those who, this is the first time that they have uh, heard about the Global Give Back Circle, and there's probably only two or three people on the planet who, who haven't, but for those two or three people, tell us about the Global Give Back Circle. You know the story, and Mary knows the story, but mo mo people that know me know the story. It was 2005, and I was working in Europe because I was living in Paris at the time. Had a great life, everything I needed, all the money I, I needed shopped in Florence during sale time and I remember I was in <laughs> Istanbul and it was September 2005 and I saw Larry King live and I was watching him interview Bill Clinton. It was the first CGI. <coughs> and at that interview I remember President Clinton saying um, I'm gonna kind of throw this party and I'm going to invite anyone who wants to come as long as they do something and if you don't do something you're not invited back. And it, it, I thought, this is interesting, I can do something. I, I'm working, I'm working in Africa, I'm working in Europe, I'm working in Asia, but I can do something. And I was a pretty good mentor to women that I worked with. And I thought, I'm in Africa a lot, I'll start a mentoring program. I was in South Africa working on business, I flew to Kenya. Oh, first of all, I Googled disadvantaged <laughs> girls, schools, Kenya. They didn't have Bing then. <laughs> and I, a few, three schools came up that, that catered for very at-risk girls, and I flew to Kenya, and I rented a taxi, and I went into the one major slum there, into the rural community, and I met with a nun, I met with two principals, and I convinced them to do this mentoring program. And they said, we don't know what mentoring is. I said, we'll figure it out together. And Mary was in the first 10 from the one school, and mm -hmm. I then called girlfriends and said, be mentors, you know, I have these girls, and I then made a, a CGI commitment. I, I, I applied, and I was able to get one of the free passes in 2008. <laughs> I was one of the lucky ones, I guess they had a lottery. And I went there and I needed $350,000 because what we, we learned is we need to do more than mentor these girls. We had to take them on to tertiary education. We had to complete that return on investment on girls because a girl like Mary, she would graduate high school and in Kenya it's a boarding school. Everything was fabulous while she was there. She was on a full scholarship because there was another good willer that gave it to her. But the minute she graduated, she was gonna hand in those big black shoes. She was gonna put on flip flops and she was gonna walk back home and she wasn't going to get a job. We had to take her further. I needed, in 2008, I needed $350,000. There were 35 girls, and we figured out $10,000 a girl, mm -hmm. using the loan system there, would allow us to take them through university, and more importantly, also give them ICT skills, because we knew they needed that. Even back then, we knew they needed 21st century skills. Mm -hmm. And I, Find out I was accepted to come to the CGI. I went into CGI Connect and made about 400 appointments. I contacted everybody. I contacted Bono. I contacted Barbara Streisand because at that time they were all on CGI Connect. Mm -hmm. About 100 people came back and said, I'll meet with you. And then I did the math. I thought, I can't meet with all of them. I don't have enough time in these whisper rooms. Narrowed it down to the ones that were, were actually going to give resources in the form of some sort of grant. Mm -hmm. And just ran around begging for change and um, I, I, there was a Greek banker and from um, the Agricultural Bank of Greece, and this was 2008, and I was downstairs uh, having coffee, and we had 15 minutes, they were timing it. I didn't know what to say, and I said, I've never had breakfast with a governor before, and mm -hmm. this is my passion, it's not what I do for a living, because I was still working full-time in consulting, and he said, Linda, we're all governors. Our passions govern us. I came here with $300,000, and I'm investing in you. Oh. <laughs> so I then thought, wow, this is so exciting. And then I remembered President Clinton saying, everyone has to sign some book. 
when they make this commitment. So I grabbed him by the hand and I said, you have to sign this book. I know there's a book here somewhere that we signed. <laughs> <laughs> and there was some book up there. We signed the book. But the, w the people working at CGI said, Linda, you're short um, $50,000. I said, I know. And they said, have you met James Mwangi from Equity Bank? He's Kenyan. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't met James. They brokered that introduction. And if you know James, he's mm -hmm. like, we can't let the Greeks out to the Kenyans. <laughs> <laughs> We're good for the other 50. I came back to Kenya. And um, two weeks later, and I brought a Greek flag, and I told them <laughs> that they were going on to university, and there's this amazing picture, and they're <laughs> jumping up in the air, and they're holding the Greek flag. And when we were watching, this is so amazing, when we were watching CNN, this t about three days ago, right? Yeah. Um, they had an interview with President Clinton again, and they were explaining CGI, and they showed few photographs you know, of all the different things that have happened. And what photograph did they show? That photograph of the <laughs> girls holding the flag. And it was an <laughs> aha moment, right? <laughs> so that's how it started. And today the program is that. A girl gets a mentor. She gets the funding that she needs, everything from soap to Shakespeare, to make sure she doesn't fall through the cracks. But the most important thing is she's got to give back. And she mm -hmm. has to commit to giving back. And they actually have learned to give back by reading President Clinton's book, Giving. Mm -hmm. Every girl reads it. Every year a give back commitment is made. Every year a progress um, report is done. And for the past four years, we've invited someone from um, CGI to come and facilitate those workshops. So it's kind of a big, fun aha moment um, in Kenya when that happens. And we've embedded in them um, a give back ethos and, and, and give back skills just as much as we've embedded in them financial literacy, reproductive health, and leadership. Mary, do you give back? I guess I do <laughs> give back. <laughs> <You> better, <huh? laughs> yes, I do give back. Um, I started giving back from from long time ago, but uh, when the global give back circle came into play, just it, it just all got much better because it was all structured. It's measurable. You have to make sure that it has an impact, even if it's on one person. And my give back started um, at Kenyatta National Hospital where I, I worked as a volunteer, I helped in different capacities, filing, electronic filing as well, helping patients, helping children. And then uh, when I went to Dubai, my give back commitment was teaching English to construction laborers who um, have been left out and they're living in, in camps. And if you teach them English, they get a promotion at least. They get to be, you know, traffic officers or just something to help them move on and, you know, feel much better about themselves. Yes. The Global Give Back Circle started because of the Clinton Global Initiative. I made a commitment in 2008. And you know I came from private sector, knew nothing about this development world. But the Clinton Global Initiative pretty much gives you a roadmap to follow and allows you to hook up to people and put you in whisper rooms and CGI Connect. And at the end of it, I, I came out with some amazing partners, Microsoft being one of them, USAID, MasterCard Foundation. And together, they galvanized together um, as a team. And we now have the largest program in Kenya for tertiary education for at-risk girls that take them into employment. So where there are a lot of um, organizations who help them in primary school, in secondary mm -hmm. school, we have the largest one that takes them after that. I remember the first interview we did, and I think that you were working very, very hard on the 35 girls who were in the program, yes. and it's grown a little bit. Yes, right? <laughs> one of the first 35. <laughs> that was 2008. Wow, 2008. And now we're up to almost 600. So I heard you you talk about partners Microsoft and Mastercard. They're from the private sector, and I and I get that. But then you've got a governmental partner with USAID. We do. The so what's the difference in how they work together? Well, they work. They actually work together very well. What USAID loves to do is engage in partnerships where private sector plays a significant role. Mm -hmm. And the reason that they like partnering in our program is we are a bug light for private sector. Private sector invest in scholarships for these girls as human capital development. Mm -hmm. That's the pitch, that works, and they get it, and, and that's what it's all about. So for USAID, if they give a dollar, private sector gives a dollar too. Oh, fantastic. So that's, that's how it works. So Mary, uh, I understand the congratulations are in order because the last time we talked you were a student, but now you're not anymore. <laughs> yes. Because you, you graduated. Yes, I did. And coming from a dad's point of view, big congratulations because you're employed. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. How'd you do that? Um, 
Having been in the school, the American University in Dubai, I mean, I have, um, I was very active as a student and I built a lot of good rapport with um, a lot of staff, faculty, and um, as soon as I graduated, um, it was only, uh, it was only a matter of um, applying for a job and getting it in the university. So you were a, you, you are from Kenya. Yes, I And am. to get you to the university, were you just a super privileged child or was there something else that helped you? When it comes to finances, no. When it comes to a mother who had the drive to push me, yes, I was super privileged. Um, but um, even with the drive of a mother who wants to push you through without other, um, other people who can help you, other support systems who can help you get to university, you can't really make it. So that's where the Global Give Back Circle came in, started by Linda Lockhart in 2006. Um, it was introduced in Starehe Girls Center, and I was very lucky to be among the first 10 girls to be chosen to get into the Global Give Back Circle. Mm -hmm. And um, that's how I got into university. Got to brag about you just a little bit. You were <laughs> like president of everything there at, at the University of uh, Dubai, right? I was the president of the Student Government Association. <laughs> Yes, at the American University in Dubai. And was she was a Clinton scholar. A Did Clinton? you know that? No. Yes. yes. <laughs> wow. So, yes, I was um, a Clinton scholar. Linda, are, are you patting yourself on the back? Or I guess everybody's patting you on the back because of, of the things that you did to help her. No, I, I, I'm patting her on the back. She did it all herself. I'm patting her on the back, too. <laughs> <laughs> so the program itself, um, how has it changed since Mary started? That's a good question, um, and Mary, I'm going to ask you to help me. In the okay. beginning, when Mary was in the program, we really didn't know what it was. It was a mentoring program, and we thought we would get girls into university. And as you learn, because we, we've learned, this is 2006 we started, what else does she need to get into employment? She needs reproductive health skills. She needs financial literacy skills. She needs leadership skills. She needs um, employment readiness skills. And those are things we didn't think about in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So it's much more comprehensive now. And when we do go and ask for a sponsorship of a girl, mm -hmm. we make sure that all those pieces are in place. Because if they're not, someone could sponsor a girl to go to university in Kenya, but if, they didn't, if we didn't take care of the reproductive health training, she would get pregnant, possibly. Mm -hmm. If we didn't do financial literacy, she may not know how to manage her money when she leaves. So the difference is now it's much more holistic. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's all done through mentors, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You had a mentor. Yes, so I have she? a mentor. Um, my mentor's name is Charlie Gower. She's British. She lives in London. And um, I've had her since 2006. And apart from her being my mentor, I have um, she's mentored through me through a lot of um, a lot of situations, difficulties, decisions, and I also have a lot of people who have helped me and coached me through as well. Um, so I I have a lot of mentors in my life. I have one that I've been matched with at the Global Give Back Circle and I have coaches like Linda, she's my coach. Um, and I've been blessed to have people who really are of good, good, positive um, influence in my life. Linda, when you first started this in Kenya, did you have any idea that you would be going to the world's most populated country soon? No, I didn't. In fact, if you would have asked me what was our next country? I don't think I would have said China. <laughs> but How'd you get there? Um, friends who are Chinese pointed out the need. Um, things I didn't recognize. I didn't realize that there were ethnic tribes in China. Mm -hmm. And if you are a girl from that ethnic tribe in some rural community, it's just as, um, as difficult as being an at-risk girl in a country like Kenya or um, Rwanda. And I, I didn't realize that until I visited. And when I visited that school, it was an all-girls school in the southern part of China near the Cambodian border, I saw the Marys, but they were Chinese. Uh -huh. <laughs> and we interviewed our first 20. Um, we now have mentors and sponsors for those first 20, and they, they're going to be the first cohort. Oh, so wow. we can talk about them in a few years. <laughs> Are, do the, the mentors, um, do they have to speak the local language? They have to speak Mandarin for the China program. Mm -hmm. They do. Uh, whereas with uh, the Kenyan program, they don't, didn't necessarily need to, to speak 
uh, yeah. the local language? No, not necessarily, uh, because uh, in Kenya we have we have a vast knowledge of the English language. So from the very beginning that you're a kid, uh, in primary school, it's all, the, in the language of instruction is English. Um, and just to go back to your question, the first question that you asked Linda about how it, the global give back circle has changed. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to point out that when we started, she might say that she didn't know what it was going to be, but, um, she always had a vision. She always, when you talk to her, she would always imagine something bigger for you as a girl, for maybe not the whole program, but she always had something bigger than what you are seeing right now. You know, when you're saying, okay, I want to get an A in this, she would say, you want to get an A not only in this, but also in this and this, because you're leading there and I'm seeing you go there and become <laughs> a leader and become this. So she had a vision. Look at CGI in 2008 when we came here. Who knew that it would blow this big, but she always pushed it and pushed it and pushed it. So she had a really good vision that how that we worked, she worked so hard with the help of a lot of people and here we are. Mm -hmm. That's changed the law. Lynn, it has to make you feel good, the fact that uh, you are helping s to have such positive impact on so many girls. You know what makes me feel better than that? that that I have great partners. Um, I, I feel guilty when people think that I have the impact on all of these girls in Kenya. I came up with the idea. I came up with the concept. I came up with the model. But the Kenya Community Development Foundation, they mm -hmm. implement this on the ground. And they're the ones who need all the big hugs. You know, and everyone gives me all the accolades and all the hugs, but they do the day-to-day -day implementation. And the reason our program works is we look for local partners to implement. We have a local partner in China. We will have a local partner in India. And I give them the credit because I go there and for big ceremonies, everything's wonderful, I see all the good stuff, but they do the day-to-day -day little groundwork details that, that make these girls the way they are. So in other words, it's been easy for you? Yes. <laughs> 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 uh, you know, having having interviewed you several times, I know that that's not exactly true. But what have been some of the barriers that you've had to overcome in Kenya? Uh, they, we, we try to think of them as um, challenges. And one of the challenges, and you don't realize this until you're working on a project like this, we can't assume that we're the big, wonderful corporates and private sector and individuals who have to come and save these girls in, in Kenya. Their communities need to be a part of that process. And one of the things we learned, and we learned it through working with the Kenya Community Development Foundation, mm -hmm. yes, we may have been able to get a scholarship to take this local girl through, but the best thing you can do is you meet with her community and say, do you want to pitch in too? Mm -hmm. And they love to mm -hmm. do that. Even if they can only give $10, they need to be a part of her transformation. So that was a big learning personally. Um, I think had we not paid attention to it, it probably would have been a barrier for us. But we're embraced in Kenya and because we've made it their program. Mm -hmm. Mary, you talked about your mother being such an inspiration for you. <laughs> I have to ask this. Are you different than so many of the girls in Kenya? No. <laughs> Um, that was a quick no, uh, but I think um, I, I'm not different from any girl in Kenya. Um, we share the same visions, we share the same dreams of successful lives, um, a better tomorrow. It's just um, the people who put into your life, it, it, it differs who puts in it into your life and what kind of influence they have into your life. I'm not any different from my sisters, the girls in the program or any, um, it just, we have different capabilities, different, um, we've been blessed with different talents and all of us express it in different ways. So if a 12 year old girl were uh, in Kenya were to ask you, Mary, should I become part of the Global Give Back Circle, what would you say? Yes, 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 um, definitely yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Linda, do you feel like you have hundreds of daughters now? I do. You know I don't have children. <laughs> but people ask me if I have children, I say, oh, I have about 600 of them. So <laughs> You've been busy. <laughs> I've been busy. <laughs> but speaking of daughters, I, I, the most important thing for me when Mary graduated was to make sure that her mother attended that graduation. And she did. 
She, we, she arrived in Dubai the day before, mm -hmm. and there's the most beautiful picture of Mary's mother with Mary, and her mother's head is on her shoulder, and her eyes are closed, and Mary's mm -hmm. eyes are closed, and it's so emotional. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful day. <laughs> Can people out there watching, can, can they help? Uh, can they be mentors? Can they provide other help? Absolutely. Um, we have a website, um, globalgivebackcircle.org, and you can sign up to be a mentor. We now need mentors for China and continually for Kenya and soon for India. Um, we always welcome financial support for the girls, and people can help us in many ways. Mary, thank you very much for being back with us. Thanks, Thank you. Rainmaker believes we can change the world One life, one heart, one soul, one mind at a time